I mentioned to you that 2016 should be the year uh, of the Grim Reaper, the year of death. And uh, we know that somebody very famous died. So I want to bring a little teaching about death and resurrection based on this very famous news. Carrie Fisher and her mother, Debbie Reynolds, recently passed away one day apart. On the 27th, Carrie Fisher died. On the 28th, Debbie Reynolds died, both in December 2016. And I want to teach you about something related to end times. First, let me explain. And this is a, a spoiler alert, spoiler alert for anyone who's not watched Star Wars Rogue One. <laughs> Close your ears if you haven't seen it. In Rogue One, several actors appeared as their younger selves. For instance, Carrie Fisher appeared um, as 41 years younger than she was. So this is Carrie Fisher back in 1977 when the first Star Wars New Hope came out. And this is Carrie Fisher in the recent movie in 2016. Now, you can see it's kind of, to me, when I saw it, I, I know, wow, that's Carrie Fisher. How did, she, how did they do that? But it's still kind of off, right? It's not completely natural to me. And so um, she reappeared as Princess Leia with the happy buns there around her ears. And uh, this is Peter Cushing back in 1977 playing Tarkin, and uh, he reappeared as, Peter, as Tarkin in 2016. So how did they do this? Well, this is CGI superimposed on a Norwegian actress. Her name is Ingvild Dila. She was born in 1987. In fact, she wasn't even alive when Carrie Fisher played Princess Leia in 1977. She was born 10 years later. But uh, 40 years later, they figured that, you know, she has kind of, you know, wide round face and big round eyes, similar to Carrie Fisher. And so they had her act while they CGI or impose the old, you know, images of Carrie Fisher on her. Um, many of you know this, that Paul Walker died in a car accident before they finished Fast and Furious 7. And so this Paul Walker is not Paul Walker. The last scene that you see is CGI superimposed on his brother's face. This is Anthony Hopkins as his younger self in the movie Westworld. This is not Anthony Hopkins. This is CGI or computer-generated image. This is what he actually looks like. But while he's playing his normal age, they're able to use CGI to make a younger image of him in the same movie. You also probably know this is Robert Downey Jr. as his younger self in Captain America Civil War. Now, does he actually look like that today? No, nope. this is what he looks like today. But again, through computer-generated image, they are able to resurrect him to his younger self. And so I sent out a tweet as soon as I saw this, and I said, the appearance of Carrie Fisher, 40 years younger, is a prelude to the next level of government propaganda and terrorism. The Antichrist will use this technology. I have no doubt about it. They will use this technology to fool people and to make people come back and say things that people want to believe and deceive the world. This technology will be used, and it's not because I have a gut feeling about it, but because Revelation predicted it. Now that you see this being used really in our age for the first time, you can now understand the book of Revelation. If you want to follow my tweet, it's just at Chicolanti, my last name. Let's read Revelation 13. I'll read it to you from verse 11 down. This is a description of the Antichrist, and I believe we can now understand and get ready for what he's going to do. Revelation 13, verse 11. Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, so it looks innocent, it looks harmless, and it spoke like a dragon. It looks good. That's what we want. We want people who look good. 
We want the Justin Trudeaus. We want, you know, back in the days when Bill Clinton looked good, right? That's what the voters want. At least 50% of the voters, the female voters, love good-looking guys. That's what they vote for. That's a stat. It's not something I'm making up. It's a politically uninformed vote to just vote for someone based on their looks. But they got at least 50% of the voters going that way, look like a lamb, but they don't care if they speak like a dragon. And, of course, I'm not speaking of every female voter out there, but, of course, those who are informed can make better decisions. All right? It exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose mortal wound was healed. So something's going to happen. There's not even one antichrist. There are two antichrists in the book of Revelation. One's going to get injured, but the second one will tell the world it's okay. His wound is healed. It performs great signs and even making fire come down from heaven to the earth in front of the people. And by the signs that it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast, it deceives those who dwell on the earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived. And it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast. Isn't that interesting? It didn't give breath to the beast. It gave breath to the image of the beast. And we live in the age of shallow image. We live in the age where people believe what they see. People believe things that are on Facebook. I'm on Facebook, but i got to verify. People send me news all the time, and, and they say, did you know this happened? I say, did you verify that? And it turns out, no, 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 it's not true. They send me all the time. You know, the prime minister of uh, Australia has made a public announcement that all Muslims are to go back home. I say, no, they didn't not in Australia. No politician in Australia has ever had the guts to say something that could lose votes like that. They all pander for votes. They'll do anything for votes. You have Pauline Hanson. She says Australia is a white nation. It is a white nation. Can't you look around, right? Asians could have come here, but we didn't. What's the matter? Every nation has its own ethnic mix, but it's free, it allows people to come in, but it's basically Judeo-Christian. So to me, Pauline Hansen make perfect sense, right? I'm not speaking about her ethical belief, her spirituality. I just think as a politician, to say something that might actually lose you vote, that already earns more trust with me, right? If you just say things to tickle people's ears and get votes, you're just, a, you know, you're just driven by your career. So, it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast. Well, that sounds like the CGI. <laughs> the computer-generated image. Even the same word is used. We're living in exciting times, people. I can't understand preachers and pastors who say, we don't want to talk about end times. It's too extreme. Well, hang on a second. This is getting people saved. This is getting people to understand the Bible is true. How can you write this stuff 2,000 years ago unless you are God? So the image, the CGI, I'll say, just to update the word, the CGI of the beast might even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. Also, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or on the forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless he has the mark, that is, the name of the beast or the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. Oh, Christians, you need wisdom. Can I pause right there? This calls for wisdom. Right there, right there is a sign that Christians will be foolish about this. The majority of Christians who leave comments in my YouTube channel, these keyboard warriors who leave comments on whatever other social media they do, they have no wisdom. When they read this, they don't realize that they're already bought into the system of the beast. How so? People will criticize us for selling quality resources. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Who is it that is against Christians buying and selling? Oops the Antichrist. This calls for wisdom. Do you understand that in God's economy, 
free voluntary transactions is godly. To be able to buy and sell things of quality, to be able to make a living from honestly creating good services and goods is a godly thing. And the person who doesn't want that to happen is the antichrist, the beast himself. And so many Christians are already on the side of the beast. They say, we don't want you to buy and sell anything Christian. Well, yeah, if you're on, a, you know, so-and-so, they say so-and-so is on YouTube and it's all free. Yeah, if you're recording something in your bedroom and you don't have any staff, you don't have any equipment, you don't have a, you know, an organization to pay, to fund, to run, then yeah, you're not, you're not doing any of that. But we're a Christian organization that's creating Christian jobs, that is involved in Christian ministry. We have to outfit ourselves with a lot of equipment, right? We spend a lot of time on that. We give you quality products, and we say, here it is for a very low, reasonable price. And Christians get mad. You need wisdom. You need wisdom. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. And we've done teachings on that. In fact, if you want to learn about it, there's a teaching called 666. You can Google that uh, or search that in our website, discover.org.au. We don't publicize it very much, but it is there. So um, check that out. We do explain 666. I just think that it's really quite amazing that at this time, in the year of death, uh, CGI has been used to resurrect actors from the dead. And there are newspaper headlines right now that are talking about how um, actors are now needing to fight for their right to not be resurrected, to not be used, you know, without royalty payments to their family and all that. What will happen? Because then you don't, you don't need living actors anymore. You can keep resurrecting them and use CGI, right? So right now, this is the debate among the, I guess, the Actors Guild. But for us, we're not concerned about that. We're concerned about the fulfillment of prophecy. And it looks like we're in the time where prophecy is going to be fulfilled very soon. So if you see a CGI of somebody, all right, don't necessarily believe it, right? It's going to be hard for you to, to know the difference, but expect that the Antichrist will definitely use computer-generated image to lie and to deceive the whole world. Don't take his mark, whatever you do. Amen.